Hey everyone, how are we? It's been a beautiful day today, calm, sunny, no wind, and I'm admiring the blossom here, the ornamental pears. They are gorgeous, but they've got this really sort of um, pungent smell about them, but the bees love it, so we're gonna get some nice honey off them. Now today's topic, climbing roses. Now this one here is one that I didn't prune yet, but I'm gonna do it now, even though it's a little bit late. You can see it's coming to new growth. Now, unlike your typical bush rose or your hybrid, or even hybrid tea or your floribunda roses, bushes or standards, which we try to create a nice little vase shape, these ones here, well, it's, this is how we acquired it, these long stems, right? And I can take one of these stems off, but I love it so much, and I'm trying to create an arch with it. The aim with it is to be able to stop it from getting too dense and too many suckers coming up from the side of the main shoot. Now, this is a main shoot here. See this cane up here that's going straight up? We've got another younger one there. And there's a few in here which we can remove because there are a few too many in this case here. And I suppose this one here, if we could, we could bring it back closer to the actual uh, post. But before we do all that, the first part of uh, pruning a climbing rose, and this is the way I love to prune them, you may want to do it slightly different. Sometimes I use the hedge trimmer. <laughs> I think actually more times than not, and I'll show you another one out there. But the aim with a climbing rose is to create a nice continuous uh, cane that flows through to whatever area or direction you want it to grow to, and then to have short shoots on the side which will become blossoms and not to grow out too long. Now this is obviously last summer's autumn growth back up to here. And what I mean by that, have a look at that. See, we still got some old dead wood there. That's the bud itself. Now all of this, and it's not too late if you haven't done yours either, needed to be cut back to two or three buds. So for example, all that up there, cut it back to there. And that's the same with the whole plane. Now, I'm in an area where it looks like it's really dark. I can't see from this angle. That's okay there. So if I go around and just take all this back, yes, I am gonna strip it of its new growth, but that's not gonna scare it. They're tough plants, we know that. So we just cut it all the way back to two or three buds, just like this. And if there are too many, you may wanna remove some. If I come from this angle, I can see better. Yeah, that's okay. We can get away with that. Get it, cut it like that, there. And just work your way through. Die back like that there. You need to take that off and then just cut the rest of it back as well. Why do we do this? Well, if I don't do it, it'll become a big bush and a mass of branches and twigs. And if it's a thorny type of rose, you're gonna prick yourself trying to clean it out and you're not gonna get enough sunlight in it. Black spot starts to develop, mildew starts to develop and you don't want that. Oh, here, here's an example already, black spot. Have a look at this. This is black spot. I'm just gonna cut that off on the rose. Discoloration of the foliage, yellowing off with obviously black markings, irregular black markings. Now what we do is cut it back like that. I'm gonna strip it, yeah, that's gonna happen. Not everything's gonna be cut back to a stump because some of it's already nice and short, but at least I'm not gonna get this huge overarching bush climber and that becomes messy. What you're gonna see, let me get rid of this, what you're gonna see is nice tight foliage and lots of flowers on the outside. And I think I've shown this in the past, last summer time, what it looked like. If we haven't got the footage, we're just gonna have to wait for this spring, summer time for it to bloom. But all this has to be cut back. See all that? See, we cut it back to here last time and we had flowers coming on and obviously it's grown way past its area. So now I'm just gonna fast forward and show what it's gonna look like when I finish. Have a look at this so far. It's a bit bare, but it's not gonna hurt the rose at all, folks. Uh, the tough plants are resilient. That's gonna push a lot of, of these buds that haven't burst yet to grow now because I've taken off the ones that have already burst. And that's fine because we want it to grow tight. We want a nice tight growth here with flowers. And then after the flowers, we cut it back to about the same size, a little bit larger. And at the end of the season, obviously it'll have stretched out by then. We're gonna have to bring it right back again and take out some of the new canes that are coming up. Have a look down here. 
This is almost like a bush rose down here on this side here. We've got a, a side shoe coming on, then it's come out to the side there and it's forked out again. It's sort of like an open vase shape. And here, we've got a cane here, which has got nowhere to go. We cut that off because it was arching over too far. I could have, could have brought it up, but it's actually part of this main chute here. Now, if I leave it there, no, I don't like it. It's just crossing over, it's growing back into the center. So we use our lowies. Now, these are pretty cool secateurs, aren't they? Anvil loppers, bigger than the actual lowy. Ah, oh, it just cuts it like butter because it's not dry, but it's jammed. <laughs> Let go. All right, there we are. Get back in there and off it comes. We have to clean that up with a bigger pair of secateurs afterwards. So we clean that up, take some of these off. I don't need all this in here. It's too messy. I don't want crossing over and wounding itself with all the spikes that it has. So if you've got a climbing rose, folks, don't let it look, oh, look at this. This is messy. There is no possible way you're gonna get a decent bunch of flowers on this without it getting diseased, especially here. Have a look at this at, at the end here now. Look at that, it's all grown up too long. So all of this is gonna cut back. All right, before we go, I'm just gonna finish this one off to show you the finished result. Yeah, I'm rough and ready. That's how I love to work. Cut that off, cut that off, cut that there, there. Yeah, take that off. Oh, messy, messy, messy. And that's not the soccer player I'm talking about. Nearly done. A couple of more cuts. That's a lot better. A lot better. Not the best shape, but it's going to be better than what it was when it does grow. And if we want to, we can frame it back up there again, clean some of that out so we're not overlapping too much. Clean, clean up your roses. If you haven't done so already, you've got plenty of time. It's not too late. In actual fact, it is a little bit, but it doesn't matter. If you don't do it, it's only going to be worse for the plants. So the longer you leave it, the harder it is to recover. Cut them back, clean them up. And if you want to avoid black spot and mildew like that, try our EcoBoost. It's a fantastic fertilizer, great for the ground. And when you apply it on the foliage, it actually takes it up a lot quicker. And it does prevent mildew, disease, and other problems like that occurring on your plant. So rather than using a fungicide or a chemical of that sort, try a liquid fertilizer. EcoBoost and Liquid Gold combined is a powerhouse and you'll get great results. And I use it on everything, all my roses, my fruit trees, ornamental plants, and especially my little seedlings. Check it out at VasilisGarden.com. And don't forget, we're coming close to this Sunday, our first episode on 7.2. That's Sunday at 2 p.m. on 7.2. From me, Vasily, Maresi.